everyone, thank you very much for joining us. Beautiful day here in Trinidad and Tobago. But right here at the top, I welcome two gentlemen uh, who are going to firstly put me in the mood to talk and um, they're going to play some music. So we welcome Tony Hoza. Tony is a musician and today he comes um, helping his friend Professor Stanley Ruiz, who is a guitarist and also a jazz educator at the Sam Symphony School of Music. So gentlemen, good day. And before we talk, Let's have a little jazz. Um, always for me what I like to look at when people play jazz and they say it's jazz improvisation I love to look at their faces they look so <laughs> Tony <laughs> you got as close to heaven as you I don't want to say as you're ever going to get <laughs> <laughs> but you look very close to heaven there uh, well yeah, yeah. Yes. oh goodness uh, music thing always I know happen. you love love yeah. love your music yeah. but it is I think with the improvisation it is all about um expressing yourself and this is what brings about this this mood yes. of joy particularly if it's a happy piece i know sometimes in jazz you do melancholy moments as yes, well that's, that's right, right. Yes. all right uh i know tony is here just to help you today to yes, he um is. with the well he's more he's more a help to me he's more he's a mentor a mentor yes. I, I, he's my mentor uh, so yeah yes. i learned a lot of stuff from yeah. stanley man yeah. yes pull up a lot of stuff in my head all yeah. the time me on the phone all the time. Yeah. Hey, Tony, check this out. Yeah. I keep asking, what's this? What's that? What are you doing? Always taking notes. Yeah. Stanley's cleared up a lot of the jazz stuff in my head. A lot of, lot of stuff. Yeah. Yes. All the time. Yes. Oh. And this is something that it's special to certain people, to certain musicians. It's not every single musician that can do that. No, well, he has a way of explaining things and, and transferring things into mm. my head and he has a phenomenal way of doing that mm. to me. I learned so much from him, okay. you know, 
the picture is getting a lot less hazy for me now. Oh, wow. Well, <coughs> and you know, we're here, and it's all courtesy Sam Symphony School of Music. Mm -hmm. And listening to what Tony says, because Tony is one of the most respected musicians here in Trinidad and Tobago as far as guitars are concerned and playing That's the right. guitar. So that coming from him just gives credibility now to what you're doing at the school. Well, I, I feel very humbled. <laughs> um, I, I'm more, more or less a backroom player, mm -hmm. so I'm not outside there. You see, mm -hmm. I used to be at, at one time, but I realized that um, to become... Uh, virtuoso level in musician. You, know, you need to do a lot of wood shedding, as we call it. You have to get behind the closet and sit down and practice, read and study. And this, I suppose, this is one of the shortcomings of, of uh, many musicians in Trinidad, particularly in the pan fraternity, where people play strictly by rote and they don't necessarily know what they're doing musically. So, what we attempt at Psalms is to try to um, teach them. The, what, the house in music. Okay. And, um, but but, uh, but with, with, with guitar in particular, um, it's, it's an it's a, it's a upward climb because, because the guitar is a very difficult instrument. Um, it is not as visual as a piano, mm -hmm. so that um, you need to put in more. Right? Now, of course, if you're playing classical music as opposed to jazz, classical music, you play what you see and there's no deviation. Right? Um, some people tend to think that it lacks creativity in the sense that it doesn't give the, the, the artist a chance to do something different. So every time you play that piece, it's the same thing. Whereas with jazz improvisation, um, it's, uh, it's um, an intellectual type of thing, if you wish to call it that, because you have to internalize a lot of concepts and structures, and, um, which, which you ordinarily would not do in classical music. Yeah. So there's order in the madness. It's, it's order in the madness. <laughs> <laughs> no, so seriously, right. in other words, you're telling somebody, listen, you can do what you want to do, yes. but there are certain rules, really, that you yes. do have to follow. Yes. You can't just do yes. um, anything. anything that comes to your mind. Right. Mm -hmm. But again, with a jazz musician, we don't like to use the word rules. We use it as guidelines. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you say you're breaking the rules, it doesn't sound so good. All, all in fact, sometimes you do. right? Because sometimes you play something, um, a lot of people say that they spontaneously create something on the spot. But I don't believe so. I believe what you do is you make choices of what you have already internalized several years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I always, when, we, when Tony and I have having discussion, I say, listen, learn it and forget it. Learn it now, forget it. And it, it sort of stays in your subconscious mind. And in, when we, we teach um, jazz improvisers, we, we, we mm -hmm. split the brain into left brain, right brain. Left brain is all the symbols and the theory and what works with what. Whereas the right brain now is the creative mind where you draw upon the left brain. So sometimes you are playing on a concert and you have 10 minutes to do something. You don't have time to study well what you're going to do now. You just let it happen. So it's really um, mind, um, uh, what you call, mind um, and, in, and momentum. And mind and momentum. Yes. And, uh, and uh, well, the momentum of what's happening around you at the time and how the audience are reacting to different moods. Yes. Yes, Tony? Do you like that? I mean, you play in a band where you have to be structured because you're, you're backing up singers. Yes. So which do you prefer when you, know, and you have to... I, I don't mind backing up a singer. Mm -hmm. I've done that for a lot of years. Yeah. Uh, but um, the freedom of being able to play what you feel inside Yes. That's, that's the, the ultimate for me. I've, yeah. I've been working on that for quite a few years now. Yeah. And the thing is that years when you stop backing up, you'll always have this side of it. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something to, to look forward to to, to, to try to achieve, to try to grow, mm -hmm. you know. You never stop learning as far as music is concerned. Yeah, no. All musicians, all true musicians say that. Let's talk a little bit about what you teach at the school, okay. Stanley. Um, the students who come to you, I would imagine if they're going to, if you're doing jazz education, mm -hmm. that they would have to already know how to play their instruments. Yes. Yeah? Um, uh, no, we, we have uh, um, different instruments in the course. So we don't say only guitar, it just happens that. I, I, I say to them that your, your instrument is a means to an end, and that end is to express yourself. Mm -hmm. So you learn the theory, and you have to go now and learn how to navigate on your instrument and take what's in your mind and put it there. So in other words, the idea is to be a musician first, then a guitarist. A musician first, then a pianist, right? And th that is how we approach it. 
because too often, especially with guitar players, they get locked into diagrams and boxes and shapes and so on. So you don't develop that sense of neutrality that you need on the fretboard. Mm -hmm. In other words, you have to say, for example, well, I'm in third position or I'm in eighth position and you learn your things there. But it's better to learn just to hear notes and play. But of course, to do that, you have to do a tremendous amount of hours of practice. Um, so we teach, now the, the, there's a basic prerequisite. Obviously, if somebody's coming into jazz improvisers, you should know some basic things like major scales, minor scales, and so on, mm -hmm. and how to play a couple of basic chord progressions. In a case Could you of, demonstrate that for me? All right. What's a pair major scale? A major scale, mm -hmm. play a C major for me. So mm -hmm. when somebody's holding down a chord, mm -hmm. I will play this. Up an octave. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. when you play in music, you don't play scales. Yeah. You have to manipulate that scale using the notes so that it sounds more musical and more melodic. So. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just want to tell them they're on the wrong guitar. It's, your, it's this guitar we want to demonstrate the scales. Yeah, yeah. The professor's guitar. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. As a scale. Mm -hmm. Then you have. Mm -hmm. You can manipulate it. Now, I use some notes that, 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 that are outside the scale with, with what, what you call chromaticism or passing tones to give it color. Mm -hmm. So, if I'm playing C scale, I may start it like this. And phrase is very important because the most basic or simple phrase will sound tremendous if you have proper use of time and space. So, beep, beep, ba -do, ba -do, beep, ba -do, beep, 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 Right? Mm -hmm. Then you have to learn connectivity too, because you have to learn chord progressions. And in, let's say in a key of C major, you have the seven chords, and you have chords that you could bring there. So let's say we play um, the scale in chords, which will be C major, D minor, you see musical, F, G major, G7, A minor. B minor 7 with a flat 5, back to C. Ah, what you hear this note? That's a color note. Mm -hmm. In other words, the, the, the second degree of the C scale, I put it in the C chord so you get a C, what you call a C ninth. So you get a jazzy feel. Jazz players don't play these chords. I mean, it's too ordinary it, for them. Well, it's not. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Come I, on, it's too ordinary <laughs> for you. No, no. It lacks color. It lacks color. Okay, well, it lacks yes. the, the, the color for the idiom. But sometimes, mm -hmm. if you're backing up a singer and you play, for example, a C major, same with a flat five, here it is. That note might give a little problem. Yeah. So, usually, when you end the song, you play. Ba, ba, by itself. Yeah. Once I did that, that chord in church. For a song, and the priest looked at me with such venom, <laughs> and he, he called me after as mass and said, "What chord did you play in that sacrosanct song?" You there? put the priest off his um, sermon. <laughs> but the best thing about it is, I played the chord after he had finished singing because he's on the pulpit. So he, when he said "Amen," I sort of gave him "Amen," but as it oh. cool off, I did that <laughs> oh. because you get bored quickly, yeah, with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Tony has inspired me in a, in a way where, where we, we mentioned simplicity. He has always been a simple player, but it's complexity within simplicity. In other words, um, um, <laughs> let him let him let, let him demonstrate that. what no, is no. it? His Let's simplicity. What is it? He said complexity with, within with the simplicity. simplicity. Yes. He says that yes. stuff like that all the time. That is to challenge you. He says stuff that to me okay. like that all the time. Go ahead uh, and explain it, Stanley. Well, for example. <laughs> It, a three note chord, which is a triad, is normally the basic chord that you learn. So people mm -hmm. say, well, why are you playing a triad? That's nothing. But a properly voiced three note chord may sound better than a grand bar. For example, this is a grand bar chord. It's, not, it's nice by itself, but when you're in an ensemble situation where you have piano, bass, and drums, the bass man is playing this note, you have this duplicated, and that. so the song gets very muddy. So what generally happens is that you, before you practice your repertoire, you'll spend a day or two, three days with the, with the band and you'll agree on voicings, right? So you'll say, listen, you don't play this G. So for example, um, play uh, A major seven for me. All right, we have to pick up Tony Payne and A major seven here. 
it's, it's full. Mm -hmm. So if he's backing up a singer, great. That's what they need. And there's no bass, there's no drums. You can play all the full chords because you need a full music. Mm -hmm. But I will play, if he's playing that chord, I will play this chord. The inner voices. So let's do a 2-5 like on, on, the, on the A. Good. I'll play it. Go to the one. Ah, uh, you see, that mm -hmm. is simple. That is simplicity, <laughs> complexity. <laughs> right? Yeah. You weren't expecting it that there. Yeah. You see, and it's a simple interval. Mm -hmm. You hear that in country and western doing yeah. Yeah. He's great at that. Mm -hmm. And even when the soca, when he's playing the band, you hear these little, I call them chinky chords. Mm -hmm. I used to laugh at them years ago. I said, why is that? Just play <laughs> chinky it's small teeth, What they call it? Teeth in a chord. Teeth in a chord. <laughs> teeth in a chord. <laughs> so that it's something different to what the others are doing. Putting it into the music. He can give you yes. a on some chinky chords in a chord. That's a little rhythm. Well, um, I've been putting things together. Like, um, you would you would have heard in like calypso music you would hear me play some like um it's really a dyad mm -hmm. two notes yeah but you get the melody within the chord so i, I do that all the time I, if i have to play on this i'll go nice yeah. nice blue. I, I would do those things yeah. because it's it, it keeps it simple. It's not the complex. The harmony is not complex, and you get a lot of music happening within mm -hmm. the framework of the simple chord. Yeah, you know, I I think that um, if you, when you get close to musicians, sometimes if you're just standing there in the audience and you're listening to the band, you don't pick up these things. Yeah. Very recently, I had the the pleasure of standing on stage. Two bands performed. It was um, it's Blue Ventures played firstly and then um, Image and Company. Because I was on stage, I was able to look at the musicians. And what I noticed is exactly what you're talking about. Anytime one of the guitarists or any of the players did something with a little bit of extra flair or yes. style, you'd see the other guys just look at him and give him the nod, you know? Yes. So it is like, and yes. ad, ad, admission, yes. Yes, thank you, sir. Yes. You've just brought something to the plate. And then they inspire mm -hmm. each other too. Yes. You know. And I know yeah. that quite often when he does that on stage, no doubt, yes. the singer will turn and up, you know, like, yeah. yeah. But even among the musicians, mm. uh, Pelham inspired me a lot of times when he plays stuff, you know. Yes. Bass player, Albert Bush, a mm -hmm. great player, oh, yes. he inspires me all the time, you know. So I, I'm a group player. I, I don't really like to play by myself. Or, you know, I, I like to play with other musicians. And so they inspire you, you know. Okay. They make you play things that you would normally yeah. play. And I suppose you have to have the courage too because uh, the, the, you don't want them to feel that you're, you're, you're stealing the limelight away from the rest of the band. That's right. So you have to know how far to go yes. in, in certain performances. Correct. Yes, yeah? I, I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. But you see, not only that too, I, I find that when a, when a musician like, for example, Tony plays the way he is, he leaves enough space for a soloist. In other words, he doesn't crowd you. Uh, you, for example, you, if, you, if you go into some choirs, you find about 10 guitars playing and everybody's just banging a chord. You know, they're going... <laughs> right? It's too muddy. But if you play... Yeah. You, know, you, you, you leave the solos a lot of things so that I, I, I will take chances. Now, this is another thing too in jazz improvisation. A lot of aspiring... Just they, 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 they get stage fright, if you will. They, they want to be safe players. They don't want to take chances. They want to play the correct scale for the correct chord. That's all right. We, we've gone through that. But sometimes I deliberately go in the Bermuda Triangle and play a wrong note. <laughs> right? But you can make a wrong note right. making an excuse for when we hear him play wrong. Oh, I'm just going in the Bermuda Triangle. Okay. You know? So play, for example, this chord. Now, a proper note for that will be this. That is good. This good? Yes. This is alright? All those notes are good. I'll play a wrong note at all. You see that is off. But I'll do use it as a passing to you. Right? 
Yes, and you, you get challenges because um, in triadic playing, for example, let's play a D minor seven chord. Think simple. I don't have to think a scale. I will take a, a F triad. All right. So give me a little strum on that. Uh, give me a little. Okay. He did it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does it all the time. Oh, my goodness. It's the element of surprise. Yeah. How important is it, do you think, because uh, there's so many people who go and study music, and I think it, uh, you alluded to it a little while ago, where you have a choir, for example, and a whole group of guitarists, and they're just strumming away there. And as you say, after a while, the music just sounds very boring yes. in the background. So therefore, how important is it for people who, you know, really want to get into music professionally? to do things like these jazz improvisation classes? Um, well, uh, one of the things too is your, is your emotions too. And if you are a, a person who has a vexed spirit, <laughs> generally, you, you, you can't perform because you come out playing vexed mm -hmm. on the stage. And I've seen a lot of musicians that they're very good, they have good technique, but when they're playing, you can see that their anger coming out on the instrument. Yeah. You know, like we had a call with his wife, and then, you know, it's going like that. The wife becomes the guitar. Uh, the wife is the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's the first thing. I mean, everybody has, has his or her mood, mm -hmm. right? And you're not always in a nice mood and so on. So what you do, you do little warm-up exercise. But the important thing is um, creativity, where I learned a long time is what you leave out is what makes you sound good. It's not what you put in. Right? Mm -hmm. As we saw in, we play a big chord, but if I play this, it's with little open strings, it has a nice thing. See? Right? Yeah. So, so that um, you, 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 sometimes I play with a choir. Uh, a lot of singers, front line and so on, and one guitar, and people come after me and ask me, hey, how many guitars are playing in the back there? I said, me. Yeah. But what I do is I cheat, if you want to call it that. I will play a chord, and I will have silence, and let the rest of the voice sing. So with my chord and their voices, it creates a nice, beautiful orchestration. Mm -hmm. Right? So I just stick the chords inside, if you're playing a little finger, so I like... Silence. See? So you have the time and space. Mm -hmm. So nobody really can teach you creativity. Eh? You, have to, you have to have a certain amount of natural ability. Of course, anybody can learn anything, really, if you put your mind to it. But you, you need a certain amount of natural ability. And oh, oh, let me just switch. And practice. Yes, practice. practice yeah. is the you thing. You still practice a lot? I've, I've, every day I try. Every day I, mean, I try. How many years have you been playing? The guitar? Yeah, since oh, you were... Oh, man. Since I, since you're I learned to play guitar in secondary school. Okay, so since wow. you were this high. Yeah. And you have just been playing, and you still practice. Yeah, because, again... And I'm not... Sorry. Yeah. I'm not talking about practice with the band. I'm talking about at no. home. You see, that's another misinterpretation of things. Everyone says they're going to practice, meaning that they're going to practice with the band. But when you're going to practice with the band, you're going to rehearse. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with your personal practice. Most of your practice time is spent alone, working maybe with a metronome. Mm -hmm. Well, these days they have the computer, so I get the computer to play the chords in the background while I'm practicing to play scales, learning to be more fluent, yes. learning to play the things you hear in your head, you know, trying to develop spontaneity. So most of your practice is done alone. Okay. Yeah. This is a question I ask of all professional musicians, singers, and they, all the successful ones have exactly the answer that you just gave me, that you have to practice. Yes. You can't just say, I've reached the top of my um, game now and I don't need to do that anymore. There's something else. Mm -hmm. People who you see play 
effortlessly. You see how Stan leave it go like and do these things. It, it looks almost like second nature. That's because of the amount of hours that he has put in. I mean, he's been practicing for years. Yes. So the ones who make it seem as if it's nothing, it's effortless, call it effortless mastery. Yes. Those are the ones that put in the practice all the time. Okay. Yeah. That's so you need, yeah. Yeah. you need to let your students know that as well, that if they're coming to do this, they have to seriously have time and want to put in time. Yes. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. That, yeah. That's very important. Of course, important. you get those who just want to learn some basics yeah. and so mm -hmm. on. But um, what we do in a, in a case where um, there are those who don't have the pre prerequisites, we put them into a preparatory class um, to get them up to scratch. And then they move into the heavier mm -hmm. stuff because it's, 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 it's a lot of reading, it's a lot of work. It's, it's, in some cases, mathematics. Because when you're talking about intervals, that's maths, yes. and chords are built on intervals, and there's a thing called intervallic plane. Instead of, you go. Goodness. <laughs> see how oh, he, see what he does to me? Absolutely. He does that all the time. He you does have, that to me all the time. Yeah. And when do people in Trinidad get the opportunity to hear you play? I mean, okay, you said in church, so we can all come to church. I'm trying to talk but him then, into doing stuff yes. with me. I'm mm. trying to talk him into coming out and doing stuff. You I know? think so. I think you're, you, yes. we deserve, we, we're such lovely people. We deserve to have you um, uh, well, have a I concert used, or something. I used to do mm. little concerts and other things, but... I find that if I have to quarrel, I quarrel with myself. You, you go to band practice, you know, the guy's coming late, and you know, I find that there, there, there needs to be a little more discipline in our country yes. in terms of musicians, because musicians come, you know, if band right. practice is four o'clock, let's go. And if you get material to go home, go and practice it. So you find that um, those who are struggling are the ones who are doing the least amount of homework, right? I mean, the boring things what I do as a guitarist, I do it while I'm watching TV. You sit down and just, you know, and you do all the boring stuff, the navigation. And um, a musician told me two uh, years ago that uh, um, any musician's life is a continuum of instrument, music stand, mm -hmm. right, and your pencil and paper. Okay, tell me about it. If you're married to a musician, you have to learn <laughs> how to look at television with a guitar <laughs> playing. Tell me about it. <laughs> all right? You have to learn how to eat at dinner table with somebody playing a guitar as they eating. Yes. Okay, I know. Um, time, unfortunately, has run out. Um, but I think you have given us, both of you, a clear insight into what jazz improvisation is all about. I know that there are many, many people out there who would really want to come and take the course. Um, Sam Symphony School of Music, uh, your professor, Stanley Ruiz, is the gentleman who handles the guitar and jazz education classes. And I'm sure after hearing him today that uh, many of you are going to realize that you have a maestro to deal with if you go to the study under him. So thank you very, very much. Tony, you keep up all the good work of yeah, the music. Keep love, on practicing. Love, you've been practicing and it's working. <laughs> he's been practicing, so when he goes to rehearsal, he's not going to be one of them causing stress. <laughs> 663-6222. 663-6222. That's the number you can call. Speak to anybody who answers the phone. Tell them the courses you're interested in and they'll tell you more about it. Okay? Thanks again. We're going to now have some music where once again we can hear what I call, you know, the, the use of instruments. You're going to play a little bit more for me again? Yes. Please.
<laughs> and he did it again. He did it again. He went up there in the Bermuda Triangle. All right, thanks, guys. And I just wish, you know, whilst you were playing there, that I could sing because I just saw myself there as a jazz singer. But uh, I'll have to come to do a lot of practice.